Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me. I'm Chris. I thought today I'd just do a fairly relaxed video where I'm telling you about some of the fragrances I've worn the most this year. So here are my top 10 most worn fragrances of 2021 so far. So these aren't new 2021 releases. These are just fragrances from my entire collection that I've worn the most this year. And I do need to just sort of put this into context. So when I say most worn, I probably wear each of my fragrances a lot less than maybe other people do, or certainly people with smaller collections. I've got a few hundred to choose from, and every day I'm testing new fragrances, so I don't get to wear my favorites as often as I would like. But despite the fact that I may wear my most worn fragrances less than other people might wear their most worn fragrances, these are still the ones that I've worn the most. I could not say that again, I don't think. Right, all right, let's get started. The first fragrance I'm gonna to talk to you about is Molecule 01. To some people, this smells of nothing. Sometimes when I wear it, it smells of nothing. Why do I wear it? Because sometimes you don't want a smell of anything. There are other reasons to wear this. I do get a bit of something. I get a bit of maybe a, a woody muskiness. It's a nice clean fragrance to wear. If you wanna smell good, but you don't want to smell of anything, if you get what I mean. I guess it sort of accentuates your natural sort of human smell, as long as you're clean, not if you're smelling of, you know, body odor and things like that. I'll often wear this because I have been complimented on this before. I had a great compliment from my hairdresser. I was wearing this and only this. It wasn't laid with anything and my hairdresser just said, you know, wow, it smells amazing. And I couldn't really smell much of it. I can kind of get a bit of something if I smell up close to my skin. I will often layer this because it's supposed to boost the performance of some fragrances. I've not really done um, a scientific experiment on this, so maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but sometimes I just think, well, you know, if people love to smell this on you and it may boost the performance of other fragrances, then I guess I, I just end up wearing it a lot. So because it's good to wear on its own, it's good to layer with other fragrances, it's an easy reach, Molecule 01. The next one is from one of my favorite houses, it's Dior Eau Sauvage. Now, this is probably the one I wear most out of all my Dior collection. I've got quite a few. I have fairly recently got Dior Homme Eau, which I think is an extremely versatile fragrance that I could wear all year round. I've also got the original Dior Homme, uh, not the newer version of Dior Homme, the original, again, very versatile. But I've had this longer and I tend to wear this more than those. Perhaps I feel like it's a bit more versatile, I don't know. This is basically um, a citrus aromatic, so it's crisp, it's sharp, it's classy, it's well put together. You can really dress this up. You could wear this for a formal occasion, dressed up smart in a suit, it would work great. You could go out in jeans and a t-shirt wearing this. It's not that sweet, it's maybe not so youthful. It's not a fun, youthful, going out, clubbing sort of fragrance. I'm doing that a bit less these days. Um, so maybe that's why I've been wearing this a bit more. But if you just wanna smell classy, well put together, like you've got your, you know, your stuff together, then Eau Sauvage, you can't really go wrong with it. It's this classic, timeless smell. I will never grow tired of this. Works in all different situations, and every time I wear it, I just feel good, and I think I smell good as well. So Dior, Eau Sauvage, Parfum. Next one is Viking Cologne. So I've not owned this for very long, just a few weeks now, and uh, I've, I've drained quite a lot of the juice in this one. Now, this isn't the best Creed fragrance. It's not my favorite Creed fragrance. There are probably fragrances out there that do a very similar job for a lot less money. This 50 mil was 175 pounds. Yep, I know that's, that's a lot of money, but I've been wearing it and I've been enjoying it. So I feel like I'm getting my money's worth. And of course you've got the whole brand thing that ties into it. So you, you're going out into the world knowing that you're wearing a Creed and you know, maybe that's a silly thing to think, but in the back of your mind, if knowing that you're wearing 
a prestigious brand, an expensive brand, makes you feel a bit better and gives you that extra bit of swag, extra bit of confidence, then, you know, why not? Maybe that is partly worth the money because it's all about how you feel as an individual. I'm not saying everyone would feel like that wearing a Creed, but I think there's maybe a little bit of that that, that ties into it. So this is basically just a, a, a spicy citrus cologne. It's a bit more youthful than the original Viking. I think there are designer fragrances that are a lot cheaper that do a similar job to this, but I've just been reaching for it because it's so damn easy to wear. It works in any situation. I think we've had a bit of warmer weather recently and I think this cologne, um, Viking cologne just works well because you've got that fresh cologne vibe. So it's nice to wear in the warmer weather, but in all honesty, I think I could wear this in cooler months as well here in England. It doesn't ever get super cold, doesn't ever get super warm. So I think fragrances like this tend to, to be quite versatile for me, but I've really been enjoying it. It is expensive for what it is. It's nothing new, it's not a game changer. I still prefer the original Viking. There are probably other creeds I prefer over this one as well, but you know, it's one of my most worn, so it's, it's in the list. All right, next one. Oh, Zerzhoff's. Naxos. I've recently obtained this, very beginning of the year. I've had decants, I've had clones. This fragrance is just exquisite. It's a honey tobacco fragrance, but it manages to be light enough to, to be able to wear most of the year round for me. It's got some brighter notes, it's got some bergamot in the top, so a little bit of crispness, bit of brightness, so it works you know, well in warmer temperatures as well. Maybe not if it was incredibly hot you know if you're if you're in the middle of the desert I don't know never been in the middle of the desert wearing this so I don't know if it works but the kind of heat we get here in the UK pretty much works all year round for me it smells great I wore this at Christmas time this was actually my Christmas day scent of the day so it's got that sweetness from the honey it's got a nice bit of richness from the tobacco the more i've worn this the more i've really started to appreciate the lavender in here and it's not a, a lavender that smells dated it's just a, a nice little floral component that works and balances really well with everything else going on in here the honey and the tobacco amazing performance this is one of the best performing fragrances i have i haven't had to spray a lot of this to get quite a lot of wear out of it. Every time I wear it, absolute guarantee, I will enjoy it. I will never tire of this fragrance and I think I'll probably always want this one in my collection. Naxos is an absolute stunner. The next one, it's La Mal Parfum. If you watch my channel, you know how much I love the original La Mal. It was my signature scent for probably over 10 years. I wore it all through university. So all the life changing experiences that I had when I was at university, I traveled to America. I lived in America for four months. I traveled to different parts of the world. I made new friends. Uh, I did a lot of going out, a lot of enjoying myself and a little bit of work. But I, I wore this and uh, the, the original Lamal, sorry, I wore that going into sort of my, the start of my life after university. So, you know, starting to, to work and going into the big wide world and trying to earn money for myself. So the original has some very, very fond memories for me. Now I did sort of slow down on wearing it because I started discovering other new fragrances. I wanted to try other things. And also maybe I got to the point subconsciously, I, I didn't really think this, but maybe subconsciously I thought perhaps that's a slightly younger DNA for the age that, that I became. So even though I still enjoyed wearing it, in the back of my mind, I, th I thought, well, I was wearing this when I was 18 years old and I guess I'm in my thirties. Do I still really want to be wearing that scent? Is it a bit too young? So I was thrilled when the Mal Le Parfum came out because it takes that original DNA. We've got the connection to the original Le Mal, but it's got some vanilla, it's got some iris, it's thicker, it's richer. It's got a bit more of a modern smell to it. It doesn't smell as juvenile as the original Le Mal. It's not as fun a fragrance. It's not that out and out clubbing beast that the original one was, but maybe people just got tired of that smell and perhaps it doesn't get the attention that it used to. I'm not sure, I've not, I've not worn it out in a club for a while. Um, so whilst I don't think this is sort of the, um, the, the metrosexual clubbing king that the original one was or, or even Ultramal, this is a really nice wear. I can wear this in a lot of situations, most of the year round. I get a pretty decent performance. So it smells like a bit more of a grown up version of the La Mal that I love so much. So for me, the age I'm at now, this is just perfect. 
Here's another one that I will always want in my collection, Reflection Man from Amouage. I smell this and it reminds me of the time where I first started to discover niche. Actually, this is um, a very accessible fragrance for anyone looking to get into niche fragrances, make that step from designer to niche. This is a fantastic one because it's so easy to wear, but it's got a quality and a richness that you don't find with a lot of designer fragrances. So this reminds me of when I first started my YouTube channel. It was one of the first niche fragrances that I bought. Uh, I've worn a lot of this. It's just suitable for every occasion. In fact, that's a theme with these fragrances. The ones I've chosen are suitable for lots of different occasions, which is why they're my most worn. But this one works in the summer, it works in the winter. It's a white floral, it's got jasmine in here, but it's got some creaminess from the sandalwood. So for me, it's got the, the florals in here, which help it to work really well in the summer, but it's got the richness, which works really well in the winter. I've had friends who've worn this and I've been in the CR's trail. Actually, friends who've worn this actual bottle, they come around here and they ask me if they can wear it. This is one that they'll often reach for, probably because it is so easy to wear and so accessible. So I've been in the sillage of friends wearing this and it does smell great. I think you get a bit of a different experience when you smell it on someone else than you do when it's on yourself. You know, you get that sillage trail, which obviously you don't get, you, do, you don't smell that on yourself. So every time friends have worn this, it's always reminded me how amazing this fragrance is. If you want to get into niche, if you've not tried anything from Amouage, at least maybe try a sample of Reflection Man. It's hard not to like. Um, I find it a little bit addictive and I've got all those memories of wearing it at the time I started my channel. So this one is uh, an important fragrance for me. So if I want to smell classy, well put together, I want something that is luxury, something that is quite expensive, that I know is expensive. Again, that affects how you wear it. I think if you know that it's a, a fragrance that costs a lot of money, it gives you a bit of extra confidence. I'll go for Roger Parfum's Burlington 1819. I think of all the fragrances that I own from Roger Parfum's, this is the one that I could wear the most. Elysium is another extremely versatile fragrance, but that one doesn't last quite as long. I think it's a good summer fragrance or good warmer weather fragrance. I probably wouldn't turn to wear Elysium that much in the cooler temperatures, but this one I would. This is bright and refreshing. It's got the zestiness of grapefruit. It's got some mint in there, and then it's got pretty much all the ingredients available to create perfumes with in the world because Roger always puts such a lot into his scents, but it's also smoothly blended. So it's it's got a richness to it, which smells luxurious, but it's quite light and, and airy as well. So it's not a heavy fragrance. I wore this for a summer uh, barbecue in someone's garden and I wanted something that smelt classy and clean, but also, a, you know, that would get noticed. It's, it's a smell that, that stands out, but not in a way that is challenging at all. It's definitely not a challenging wear. Really, really easy to wear. I'll just often reach, this is sort of a dumb reach for when I want to smell fantastic, but not have to think too much about what I want to smell like. It just works anytime, any situation, hits the spot every time. I get superb performance off this. One of the most classy fragrances I own, um, Roger Parfum's Burlington 1819, love it. Right, I've got one here from Swedish brand Swedoft. I love so many of their fragrances. One of my favorites is X Oud. I think that's just superb. What else is good? So uh, Cambodian Oud is good. A little bit like Tom Ford's Oud Wood, but probably stronger, better performance, a little more Oudy. Maybe there's a natural Oud used in there as opposed to the Tom Ford, which is more of an Oud Accord. Anyway, Sweet Oft are a great brand, but this is one of theirs that, again, I can wear year round and it will fit any occasion and it just hits the spot every time. It's called Royal Satisfaction. So this is woody and sweet and spicy. It's sort of along the lines of Spice Bomb, but I find it to be richer, stronger, and smoother than that fragrance. So it does smell more niche. So it's sort of a maybe a niche version of, of Spice Bomb, I guess. But I think it smells better and I think it lasts longer. I think it projects more. So I think it's an all round better version of that spicy DNA. I maybe wouldn't wear this on a really, really hot summer's day. I think it would get a little bit too much then, but we don't really get that many hot days here in the UK, as I've already said. 
So most of the time in the UK, I can really get away with wearing this fragrance. Really easy to just grab, put on. I know that I'm going to smell good without having to think too much about what I'm wearing. So Royal Satisfaction is, uh, it's also got a really addictive quality to it as well. And I do tend to reach for those that have that addictive quality. So yeah, really easy to wear. Um, pretty affordable as well. This 30 mil costs somewhere in the region of about 40, 45 pounds. I think the 100 mil version of this costs 100 pounds. So 100 pounds for 100 mil of a niche fragrance that I think smells great. And uh, you can pretty much wear whenever you want. I think that's decent value for a niche fragrance. So Royal Satisfaction from Swedo. Two left, we're nearly there. This one will come as no surprise. I love Chanel as well. I think probably I own more from Dior, but uh, I also love Chanel and this is Bleu de Chanel. And I know this one is talked about so much. I know this appears in so many lists and people may be bored of hearing about this, but this isn't a video about fragrances that no one else is talking about. This is about fragrances that I wear a lot. And again, it's one of those dumb reaches that you can just pick up, spray on, and really enjoy every single time. I've got the Parfum version. I love that one as well. I often go for the EDP just because I feel like maybe it's just a little bit more versatile, but I think both are great. I don't think you'll go wrong with any of the Bleu de Chanel's. The EDT is also very versatile as well. And it smells clean and well put together. It gets criticized for it being this shower gelish DNA that isn't massively interesting. And at first, when I smelled this in airport duty free, I thought the same. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna buy this because people rave about it all the time. So I wanna see what all the fuss is about. I want to get to know it. I want to be able to, to judge it after having given it a fair chance. So I bought it and I wore it on a trip around Europe. I was traveling around Europe for a few weeks. And the more I wore it, the more I began to appreciate what a damn fine scent it is. It's got the Chanel quality. It works in any situation. It's refreshing, it's invigorating. It's got depth because there's some incense in there, um, the brightness of, of citruses. So I can just wear this whenever. And as a result, I, uh, I've worn it so much. I'm pretty much getting on for halfway down this bottle. And let me tell you, not many of my fragrances these days I've used half a bottle of, so that's saying something about how much I wear Bleu de Chanel. On to the last one. Now, I don't know if this is necessarily in order of how much I've worn these fragrances. These are just 10 that I feel like I've worn the most so far in 2021. One of my favorite brands is Parfum de Mali. I'd say my favorite fragrance from them is Carlisle. I also love Herod, but this one, I love as well, maybe not quite as much as those, but I feel that I can wear this more often than those, which is why it's in this list. So this is Leighton. Again, everyone's always talking about it and raving about this one, but you tend to find that the fragrances people talk about a lot and that appear in a lot of these list videos do so for good reason, because they're good. Um, good fragrances are gonna get talked about a lot. And I'm not hyping any of these fragrances. These are literally the ones that I have been wearing the most. Leighton, is one of my most compliments. In fact, one of the best compliments I ever had was from someone that uh, I used to work in a gym and someone who, who worked there. Completely unsolicited, we weren't talking about fragrances. She just said, wow, that fragrance you're wearing, I love it, I've never smelled anything like it. And you, you know, I could tell in her eyes that she loved the fragrance. So I had to tell her what it was so she could go and buy it for the man in, in her life. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah, it's Leighton. It just has that cardamom vanilla combination. It's got some pleasing fruitiness, very mass appealing, very easy to wear. Again, another one that is a very accessible niche fragrance. If you're looking at getting into, into niche, then you know what, actually quite a few of these would uh, would do that for you. Definitely Leighton. Burlington 1819, I think is an easy niche to get into. As I said, Reflection Man. Naxos, maybe a little richer than what you might be used to but still I think pretty easy to wear. Viking Cologne, you know, it's just a bright cologne fragrance. So I think dead easy to, to, to wear if you're not used to niche fragrances. Um, but so yeah, there it is. There's my list. There's my top 10 most worn fragrances so far of 2021. Perhaps a bit predictable. I don't know, maybe not. 
let me know. Um, everyone will have worn different things, so let me know what your most worn fragrances so far of this year are. These aren't necessarily my favourite fragrances of 2021, but having said that, if they are my most worn, then perhaps, perhaps they are my favourite. I don't know. I didn't really think about this video too much. I just wanted to let you know about the fragrances that I feel like I've worn the most this year. Let me know what yours are. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, keep tuning into FM, keep smelling good, and I'll see you in the next one.